Hey, welcome everybody, it's Caleb. This is going to be a pretty exciting video and the upcoming videos because we're gonna be talking about references and pointers inside of C++. This is actually a point of confusion for a lot of beginners, but I'm gonna make it simple for you guys. Put simply, references allow us to refer to different areas of memory. And we're going to get into the details of what that means as well as why you would wanna use a reference and how to actually make one. But first, we gotta talk about our sponsor. Did you play the clip? C++ Builder is the IDE of choice for rapidly building C++ applications. Utilize drag and drop visual components that are responsive and allow for cross-platform deployments. When building data-driven applications, you can bind data sources to visual components to make working with data easy. Go ahead and get started with a free trial of the Architect Edition, which will give you all of the features of C++ Builder. So whether you're a beginner just getting started or want to build enterprise level applications, C++ Builder is the tool for you. I'll leave a link in the description. So the first thing I want to get on the table, or should I say chalkboard, is what is a reference? All right, so like I said, I can't talk and type at the same time. Typing, this is called typing. A reference allows us to refer to some area of memory. And you're going to see this if, for example, you create a variable, we'll just call it A, and it's going to contain the value five. So the way you would do this in C++, it's really hard. Int A is five. So we just created that variable. We can create a reference to the same location and it's going to look like this. or something like that. And the way you would create it is by saying int and then using the ampersand, the capital seven, I think, give it some other name such as B and assign it the value A. That's it. That is how you create a reference. And now you can refer to this value here in two ways. The first way with A and the second way with B. So you can think of a reference as an alias. It's another name for a variable. So the very first reason you might want to use a reference is if you need an alias for some data. You want to refer it by A and B. So if you have to do that for some reason, then you might want to look into references. Now C++ can be a little bit confusing because not only do you have references, but you also have pointers. and Behind the scenes, references actually use pointers. However, we don't need to understand how pointers work or how to use them in order to use references. In fact, most of the time you don't need to use pointers inside of C++, and references are actually the preferred thing to use. So I would recommend you first understand references before you study pointers. Now I mentioned you can use references if you need multiple identifiers to refer to the same data in memory. However, this is not really the most common use of references. You will most see them when we're working with functions and passing data to these functions. So with that, it allows us to refer to the same exact area of memory inside and outside of the function. And I'm gonna explain exactly what that means here soon. So know that that's coming, but before we talk about functions, I first wanted to talk a little bit about how to actually work with these references, because it's very simple which is why we need to talk about it. When you create a reference, there's a special syntax. So like in the example we just had, we had some variable A, we assigned it a value, and then we had the reference, which had the ampersand, and that can go attached to the int, so no space between the int and the ampersand, or there can be a space there, or it can be attached to the actual variable name here. So you're gonna see all three variations and then you just assign it another variable here. So we assign it A, and now these both point to the same area of memory. So just to repeat what I said here, you might see it as int ampersand space B, int space ampersand space B, and int space ampersand B. All three of these are valid, so don't worry about which one to use. You're going to see all of them probably in your C++ development. 
So the important thing to realize when you're working with references is that there is some syntax you have to know when you're creating the reference, just that ampersand, but when you actually use the reference, you don't have to do anything special at all. So you can treat A and B as the same exact thing. What that means is if you wanted to do some output, you could output A, and then you could follow it up with an end line. You could output B, and since these are both integers, you could use them inside of expressions. So you could say a plus five, or you could say b plus five. So basically what I'm trying to show you is that you don't have to use the reference in a special way. You use it just like a regular integer. That's because it refers to an integer value, specifically this five right here. So yeah, to summarize, just make sure that you understand the syntax part comes when you create the reference, but you don't have to worry about anything different when you actually use the reference. Once you do this, you're good. One of the downsides here is that when you're working with a variable and you just see B, you can't immediately know if that is a reference or if it was the original variable. It really shouldn't matter because you can use them either way. However, it's just important to know that. This is different than pointers, where with pointers, you actually have to use them a different way. So we'll get into that later on. So now I wanna talk about the actual most common use case of references, and that is for passing data to functions. So let's say we have some function, and we'll just call this function work, and it has a parameter. We're just going to call it x, and we're not gonna do anything inside of this function right now. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to invoke this function. So we can say int a has the value five, and then we can call work and pass in our variable a. So what happens here is this value, notice we're not doing anything with references yet. This is just standard passing by value. So what happens here is when we pass in a, the value five gets copied to this variable x. So in memory, it's gonna look something like this. We have the variable a, with the value five, and then we have the variable x, which gets the value five when we pass it in. For simple types like integers, this is perfectly fine, and actually for small objects, this is going to work fine as well. The thing you need to understand though is that if you are working with extremely large amounts of data, so for example, if you just have a vector with tons and tons of data, like legally a crap ton of data, then you can pass it by reference and that data is not going to be copied. So let's just look at it with this situation here where we're working with integers. If we created this parameter as a reference by putting an ampersand right there, now this is going to refer to the same data. So this has the immediate benefit of saving memory for large data, I add, because if you're just working with integers, it's not going to make a difference. But imagine the data you're working with is very large. You're only going to have one, one copy of it in memory, and then you're just going to refer to it from the parameter. So that is the immediate benefit you're going to see. The immediate consequence, and it could be a pro or a con, is that you can change the data within the function. So usually this is a good thing if you're creating a function and you want to be able to modify the parameter variable that was passed in, you can use references. So in this situation, we could do this. X plus plus, that's going to change this data right here to a six. And notice that it changed it where A is. So that means down here in our code, A, is going to have the value six. So those changes persist beyond the function. So it's obviously good if you want to change the data inside of a function. However, it can bring up an issue where you're not expecting a function to change your data, you pass it in, and it changes the data on the outside. So you just have to be aware that Whenever you use references, that data can be changed, whether that's good or bad. Usually it's a good thing though. So I wanna go over a simple example where this might be a bad thing. Let's say we are working with a function to print out user information 
for our application into the console. So the function might look like this, void, and we can just call it print. And this takes a user object, but it's a reference here. Inside of here, we expect it to do some outputs, but little do we know it's actually modifying the data. So it might do something like you dot name and assign it a new name. And that's bad because from the calling side, you wouldn't expect this at all based on the name of the function. So you would invoke this like print and you would pass in some user, fully expecting user to be exactly the same down here, but it's not, you just got trolled. So now I wanna go over an example of where this is a good thing, and that would be swapping data. So if you created a function, we can just call it void swap. And this can take two things, let's just say integers, and we're getting them by reference, so int x and int y. And then you can do the standard swap algorithm. So you create a temporary variable, assign it x, and then you assign y to x, and then you assign temp to y. I think that's right. And this is going to work inside of C++, and this can be used to build different things such as different sorting algorithms. If we didn't have this by references, we wouldn't be able to modify the variables passed in, and it would be unaffected. But fortunately, because we have references, this is going to work. So if we have int x being zero, int y being 10, we invoke swap and pass in these two variables. After swap right here, we're going to have x being 10 and y being zero. Cool, so that's the basics of working with references. Now I want to give you a few extra tips, maybe a couple of gotchas that you just need to watch out for. So let's talk about that now. If you have a variable A, and we will assign it the value 10, and then you create a reference to this variable, and we will call it B. Again, this is just a review real quick. A is going to contain the value 10, and we'll draw that here. So that is the representation of what it might look like in memory. And then B is going to refer to that. The thing I wanna call out here is that you cannot change where B refers to. So it's not possible to make this refer to somewhere else in memory. This can't be done. So the location we set to the reference is permanent. A point of confusion that might come up is what if you do reassign this reference? Let's say we have another variable so we'll say int c is assigned the value 100, and then we take b and assign it the value c. Syntactically, it appears as though we might be changing the reference b to now point to c, but that's actually not what's happening. Because if you remember, anytime we use b, it's talking about this location of memory. So what's actually happening is it's changing this location of memory to whatever value C is. So it might look something like this. C is 100. When we take C and assign it to B, B refers here. So the value 100 is copied over to A, changing it from 10 to 100. So that's a little bit confusing and maybe that's a bit more depth than you need for this introductory video. However, it's just important to know that you can't reassign the location that a reference refers to. <laughs> Whenever you're not positive what's going on and you just need a little extra convincing, you can use an operator known as the address of operator, which is also the ampersand, but it's not the same exact thing as when we were creating a reference. So anytime you put this before a variable, such as the variable A, it's going to give you the address of this variable.